Hi, welcome back. You're watching Michelle with Michelle's Life, and today's video is my February wrap up. I read in total 10 books this month, three of them were graphic novels, and 10 of them were books. And let's just get started. I'm just going to be telling you about the books in order that I read them. So, the first thing that I read at the beginning of February was volume one of uh, Alex and Ada by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn. I absolutely loved this volume. I loved volume two as well, I'll show you a picture here, and volume three I didn't like so much. These are the three graphic novels that I read this month and I definitely recommend if you have not picked this series up to do so. I have seen mixed reviews on it, some people don't like the art and they just kind of give it an overall rating of three. I gave the first two volumes five stars and the third one I gave three stars. It is a science fiction graphic novel where this man, I think he's in his late 20s, is just living day to day in kind of a redundant repetitive cycle and his grandmother winds up gifting him a female android for his birthday to kind of give him a companion and things just kind of start to spiral out of control after that. I just loved that this graphic novel seemed to respond to our current society even though it is set in a futuristic world. Um, I liked that it seemed that we still had similar problems with accepting people and their differences. Even though they're androids, they do have sentience. So they were still treated as lesser than, and I feel like as a society we throughout history have been dealing with that problem. Obviously not androids and robots, but understanding people and accepting them for who they are and not demeaning them or putting them in a lower class than, you know, the stereotypical white people. So anyway, <laughs> I don't obviously I don't know how to use my words today. I would highly recommend checking this graphic novel out. If you don't want to buy it, then check out your library because it seems like libraries these days have a great graphic novel selection. I know mine does and I've heard a couple other people have great graphic novel selections, so go check it out. The second book I picked up I also already hauled and that is Stars Above. This is the, I guess, like fifth and final book in the Lunar Chronicles. It is just all of the novellas combined as well as an epilogue that Marissa Meyer decided to write and I, I loved it. I actually wasn't a huge fan of Winter but I really loved a lot of these novellas. I had actually originally read most of them on Marissa Meyer's Wattpad which was just free at the time. I think it's still free but I wanted to bind up and I wanted to read all of the new editions that she added to this book and I gave an overall four stars. If you haven't picked up the Lunar Chronicles, I don't know where you've been. I'm not going to talk much about it because it's literally all over booktube, all over everything right now. So just go check it out. It's a must read. The second actual book that I read this month is Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin. I was shocked when I saw that my library had this listed as a brand new ebook um, when I was, you know, perusing their overdrive and I got it right away because I saw it when I joined the debut author challenge thing for 2016 and that one definitely was the one that stood out to me the most so I'm so glad that it, like it already came out, I already read it, I already posted a review, you can check it out up there or down below. And I originally was going to rate it three and a half to four stars but I have been thinking about it so much that I think it's definitely a four and a half star read for me. It was amazing. The story is about Riley who is a gender fluid teenager. Riley starts off at a new school and has problems with a political father figure. Riley's therapist suggests it to start a blog to get all of Riley's feelings out and the blog kind of goes viral and the things kind of spin out of control but it's just a beautifully written beautifully diverse book. There are so many different LGBTQIA characters in this book and I just loved it. Um, it was a beautiful coming out story and as Riley already accepted that um, that he or she was gender fluid and in the whole novel you don't find out whether or not Riley is a he or she and that's the beautiful thing is, is that it doesn't matter. Riley is a person, you know, and it doesn't matter if it, you don't have to box 
Riley into a he or she or girl or a boy. Riley is just a beautiful character and I really hope that more people read the book. And if you check it out, please let me know. I would like to talk to more people who have read it. The next book I picked up is Emmy and Oliver. I read this on my Kindle so I don't actually own it in physical form. I do own it on my Kindle unfortunately because I read 90% of it and then I DNF'd it. <laughs> I did listen to a lot of it on audiobook and I just found that so many of the lines made me cringe. Just the dialogue was so cheesy and awful. I don't know. Anyway, the premise of this book is, is that Emmy and Oliver are best friends. They are born on the same day in the same hospital. They are neighbors and they grow up together. And when Emmy and Oliver turn seven, Oliver's father kidnaps him and he disappears. So later in life he comes back and they have to reacclimate understanding each other and fitting back into uh, school and stuff like that and it, it started off pretty interesting just when Emmy and Oliver started reconnecting and becoming friends it got real cheesy real quick and I just I didn't like it so there's that I got 90% so I'm still going to give it a two star review I couldn't push through the last 10% the next book that I finished was a buddy read and I read this book with Anna over at Read to Me at Midnight and it was really fun reading with her and I hope to do more buddy reads with her in the future and we both read The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I thought about doing a review for this book but after reading her review on Goodreads I had nothing left to say. She perfectly worded it. So anyway this book has also been spread around booktube quite often and so if you don't know about it, I'll tell you really briefly. It is about teenagers living in a world where there are heroes, but the characters in this book are not those heroes. These are just your average teenagers facing ordinary problems. And the one thing that I really did appreciate about this book is that our main character has OCD. I haven't read many books with mental illness, and I liked that this book talked about therapy in a positive way and talked about how his friends and family helped him through it and I thought that was I thought that was really good. Also there are trigger warnings for eating disorders in here as well. But overall I gave this book three stars. I I liked it. I liked that it was different. I think that it's necessary in the YA genre. Um it just I don't know, there was something something missing. It felt like it was written just to be written, you know, like just to put it in the genre. Of course, Patrick Ness's writing, as usual, it was beautiful, but uh, I don't. I didn't really feel connected to any of the characters. The only character I felt connected to had somewhat hero-like qualities, so I feel like that kind of contradicts the purpose of this book. So I, I don't know. If you've read this book, let me know your feelings down below. I look forward to hearing about them. The next book that I read, I actually started in January and then I finished this month, and I'm glad that I did because. I really enjoy reading them but for some reason I have been taking my time with them and I kind of also enjoy just taking my time with them. So that is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. As you may know this is my first time reading them and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Obviously I'm not going to go into much about it because you know what Harry Potter is about but I just loved the differences in the book from the movie because I know I've seen the movie but I haven't read the books so I'm enjoying finding those differences. One thing I did find a little disturbing was the way that the mandrakes were treated in this book. I thought it was a little messed up the way you watch them grow into teenagers and get pimply and move into each other's pots and maybe I read it wrong but it sounded like they pretty much just killed them for the the potion to revive the people but I could be wrong maybe they just like shaved them or I don't know. I, I read it as I killed them. Maybe I misread that. It's a little messed up. But anyway, I gave this book five stars. Um, the next book I also started several months ago, but I kind of enjoyed just putting it down and picking it back up in between books, just living in the world for a little bit longer, and that is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. This is the floppiest of floppy books. I mentioned this in my 25 bookish facts about me, and the way I just love floppy books, look at that. How perfect is that when you're reading that it just perfectly flops open, you don't lose your page, you're not worried about a binding breaking, you know, it's just, it's great. It's wonderful. 
I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I loved all the character development that happened. Um, I loved the magic system. I felt that some of the action scenes kind of got weighed down at times. But at the same time, I usually have a hard time understanding action scenes. I get lost, and in this I didn't. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, Mistborn is a high fantasy series. There are three in a trilogy and then there's like an extension series. It's in a society that, it's in a past society where there is a like a dark ruler who controls everything and there are these people called Ska and they are the slaves and of course there are nobility and stuff like that but then there are also the Mistborn and Mistborn are children that are bred from nobility basically sleeping with Ska um, slaves and children being born from that. So we have Kelsier who's one of our main characters and he is a Mistborn and he is knowledgeable about all of the Mistborn ways. And what a Mistborn is, is it's someone who has the ability to ingest different metals and through ingesting those different metals they have wells of reserves that create different abilities. So I don't remember like the specifics but one of them allows them to pull on metal or push on metal. They can also affect people's emotions by like rioting them and making them feel certain ways. One of them makes, one of the metals makes them stronger, makes their senses stronger, just different things like that. And then we have another main character and her name is Vin and she is also, she, she's a Ska and she didn't know that she was a Mistborn. But anyway, you see her develop through this book and it's it's really cool. I've heard, I think it was Caitlin over at Book Chats didn't like this because of Vin and the way that she was portrayed and I totally get that. But um, I think at this time, like the, the time period that Sanderson was kind of going for here, it made sense that women were treated this way. And I did like how she grew and how the crew members started treating her more, you know, like a member and not just like a female. So. Also, if you've read this book, Sazed is the best. I love him. He was definitely my favorite character. So if you've read this book and you want to talk about it, go over on Twitter, DM me anytime you want because I would love to talk to you about this. Anyway, I gave this book 4.5 stars because there were times when it kind of got weighed down for me and just a little slow. The last and final book that I read this month is The Absolutely True Diary of Part-Time part Indian by Sherman Alexi and I actually listened to most of this on audiobook because I learned that the author himself reads it and it was amazing. I actually think I enjoyed it more because I listened to it than I would have actually enjoyed reading in the book because though it has some mature content and it was actually a banned book which I didn't know but after reading it I can kind of see why people would have banned it. Obviously I don't support banning but I understand the reasons why people gave to ban it. Um, the paragraphs are short and there are pictures and lots of metaphors and similes and his writing is just fantastic. I definitely highlighted and wrote in this book. It is now mine forever. I gave this book four and a half stars as well and I just loved it. I loved that when I would switch from the audiobook back to this one I could still hear him while I was reading and his voice is just so unique and beautiful and I kind of want to read you some quotes. This this one hit me right in the very beginning. We're on page two. It says, uh, And what's more, our white dentists believe that Indians only felt half as much pain as white people did, so he only gave us half the Novocaine. <laughs> wow. So it was just a really interesting perspective to read from, and I really enjoyed it. So Junior is our main character, and he grows up on this reservation, as did all of his generations prior to him. And he goes to school and he opens a textbook and sees that his mother's name is written in there so that she used it back when she was his age and he gets mad and throws the book. The teacher then confronts him and says that I had your sister as a student and I think that you are better than this place. So Junior winds up transferring to the all basically all white school that is off the reservation um, but it's just a very very interesting story. 
the why the reasons why it was banned is there is like crude humor but it's very like middle school boy type humor you know he talks about butts and farting and at one point one of his friends says he gets a boner for books like just stuff like that you know it's not like super crude it's just you know immature funny stuff so i don't necessarily i don't agree obviously that it should be banned because people are going to joke about this during this age group anyway. So though it seems like it's written in a middle grade -y sense, I do think that it is more YA um, since he is a high school student. But anyway, I highly, highly recommend you listen to the audiobook of this because I was laughing my ass off throughout the whole book. So I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a diverse, beautiful read. Anyway, that was my super long wrap up. I did not intend it to be that long, but I think I had a really good reading month other than the uh, Emmy and Oliver situation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, definitely welcome all my new subscribers. I really appreciate you coming to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!